Hello Accounts people, time to have a look at ratios, focusing on the four ratios for the level 3 AAT syllabus. So first of all, most ratios are actually percentages, there are a couple that are still occasionally calculated as a ratio, in other words something to one, and um, these were all ratios once upon a time. Uh, these are all used to assess the performance of a, a business. There are others to assess liquidity, including the ones that are usually ratios or help identify issues within a business structure. Uh, they're not covered by any rule, IAS or IFRS, so you may see a slightly different formula on some, particularly the ROCE. There's others that have quite a few different formulas different people use. Um, we're also going to compare them with previous years, so are we better or worse? improved or deteriorated to last year, better or worse than a similar company, can't compare them with a different company, there's nothing to do with us, uh, or are we better or worse than the industry average, a figure that would probably be given us by a trade body. So first of all the gross profit margin, so a change in the gross profit margin is only caused by a change in the unit cost or the unit selling price. Uh, maybe a strategic decision, so selling goods with a higher market position usually increases the margin, so the money to go up market. So we were a discounter, now we were mainstream or elitist goods. Uh, and you'd expect to see the margin on a Rolls Royce being higher than the margin on a Mini. Uh, like the cost though, uh, it may just be due to inflation. Businesses will use these calculations to see the effects of inflation and the costs. So volume is only an indirect cause of the change in selling price or cost per unit, so it won't be an answer in the question. Students often get that one wrong. Um, we may lower the prices to sell more, um, or if we sell more, we can get economies of scale, or we could lose economies of scale. We'll demonstrate that in these calculations. So a higher percentage is usually better, unless we've given ourselves such a high margin we haven't got any sales, and therefore no profits no turnover or very low turnover. So we're going to keep, keep um, to some fairly straightforward numbers. I've got a selling price of £3 and a cost per unit of £2 and do a lot of the calculations based on a thousand units made or sold. Uh, so the revenue would be £3,000, £3 times £1,000, cost of goods £2,000 giving us a gross profit of £1,000. Gross profit divided by Revenue times 100 is 33 percent. So let's see if the volume changes. Well, add 20 percent. Our revenue goes up, our cost of goods goes up, the gross profit's gone up, but our margin stays the same. So it doesn't matter how many we make, our margin will stay the same. Back to that number. So let's change the cost or price. This is where it will actually matter. So if I take 10% off our selling price, um, we should, of course, sell more units. But you can see the margin going down. Um, if I take the same percentage off my cost per unit, the margin goes back to where it was. Increase the price without and reduce the cost per unit. I've got a better margin. Doesn't matter how many we sell, that margin will stay the same, although the actual figure for gross profit increases if we sell more units. So the volume itself will be reflected in the net operate or operating profit margin. Uh, net or profit for the year for sole traders operating for companies. And this is because we're now introducing the overheads which are mainly fixed. So if we make more units, that overhead is spread over more units, level 2 costing. So, but we're calculating these figures on our income statement, profit or loss, after the gross profit. So if the gross profit margin goes up, so should our net profit margin. We'll show that, of course. Um, so let's just do a nice simple one. Reduce the overheads, and suddenly... Uh, operating profit margin, net profit margin goes up. That one, not particularly difficult calculation. However, let's see the effects of volume. So remember, volume doesn't change the gross profit margin, 
but actually it's now an increase in volume has actually increased our operating profit margin and net profit margin. That's the same overheads being split between 1200 units, so lower cost per unit. Uh, I can go in better, be really greedy, and you can see it going up. Back to where we were. Now, if the gross profit margin changes, the operating profit margin changes, so let's do the same calculations we did earlier. So this one reduced our margin here. We've actually made a loss now, and the net margin reduces as a result. Unless, of course, I make more units, I've reduced the price by 10%. See what this does. Oh, not good. Still not good. Still a loss. Um, and of course the gross profit margin is still lower. So it would actually take more than a 10% increase in sales to compensate for the 10% uh, loss in selling price in, in revenue. Uh, something quite a bit actually to get back to where we were. So those are the margins, so nothing to do with volume, practical terms, yes it may give you an economy of scale, this one reflects the volume more because of the fixed nature or semi-variable na nature of most of our overheads. So next one's ROCE, now I've only ever calculated this for a limited company in the real world, however, um, we can apply it to sole traders. And it tells the shareholders how well the directors have been using the money they've got available to them. That's the investments, the shares, plus any loans that they've had. Um, it's so important, I actually sometimes call it the mother of all ratios. Possibly the first one you do set an AGM when somebody hands you a copy of the financial statements. So the formula for a limited company is operating profit over the equity plus the non-current liabilities. Now I haven't seen this in the AAT practice papers but I have seen it in some of the publishers question banks which is why we need to have a, understand the difference but by and large it's still telling you the same thing. Uh, in sole traders profit for the year or net profit because it's easier to say over the capital employed opening capital plus non-current liabilities, the same loans. There is a bit of an issue though on non-current liabilities. Loans for a sole trader, they are the same business entity. Sometimes a personal loan can't be included in this calculation. Uh, higher will always be better. It's a better return on your investment, on the money you have to play with. So any change will be due to one or more of the components. So think top and bottom halves of the formula. It's either a change in the profit, the capital, or then learn, or anything else that's in the, included in these figures. So an increase in profits, the top half will increase the percentage, we'll do some calculations in a minute, and vice versa, reduce your profits, less return on your investment. Uh, increasing capital reduces the ratio, the percentage, the bottom half, um, and vice versa. So if you reduce the capital, Maybe you've made a loss the year before, ROCE you can go up the following year. Uh, a new loan will reduce, um, again because you've increased the bottom half, uh, paying off a loan will increase. And then the main the point about personal trade, personal loans and sole trader, hmm, it's an accounting conundrum. Uh, sole traders capital should normally increase year on year because you've seen the formula opening capital plus profit minus drawings equals closing capital but actually the capital that created that profit was the opening capital so you shouldn't be using the closing capital. So let's have a look at some of the numbers. Um, we've got some fairly straight num forward numbers here. We've made a profit of £5,000. doesn't matter whether this is the sole traders or limited companies version. A uh, capital equity of 6000 and a loan of 1000 uh, That gives us 5000 over 7000 times 100 is 71%. If we make a bit more money, the ROC goes upwards. If our capital had gone up, that would reduce it. Uh, if we pay off a loan, that increases it. Take out a new loan reduces it. 
So think top and bottom, top half and bottom half, and you won't go far wrong on this. Analyze it. Think about the components of the formula. So the last one, mathematically, is the nice simple one. The, the reasoning, the, the possibilities are wider now in terms of uh, business accounts. Um, it's any expense figure uh, as a percentage of revenue. Of course, limited companies only have four cost figures in accounts, or they only have to have four costs in their accounts. Um, sole traders, though, tend to have a bigger range of costs. <clears throat> this is because the individual figures may be useful to the sole trader. They can understand, they can relate to them. So the shareholders in a limited company, uh, they're more investors, hence they're happy with the simplified IAS1 version for limited companies. Um, a higher percentage may indicate cost hasn't been controlled or beyond control. Of course, lots of costs, lots of overheads go up and you can't do anything about them. Fuel prices at the moment, uh, utilities prices at the moment. Lower means good control or a natural reduction. So if you use diminishing balance, your depreciation charge will go down every year. This could actually mean that the depreciation as a percentage of turnover reduces, which of course generally looks good. Um, but does it really tell you the whole story? No, it's just a bit of information to help analyse, tell a story about what's happening in the business. Uh, they're all against the revenue. Um, lots of expenses are fixed or semi-variable. Um, so the revenue increases or revenue or they rise if the revenue decreases. So let's have a play around with some numbers. Um, we've now got 10,000 units at a pound. Uh, cost of sales 60p each. So we've got the cost of sales, um, gross profit margin and a margin. We've got some admin costs. That's a semi-variable. Fixed, part fixed, part variable. Rent, purely fixed. Travel semi-variable. So let's just have a look, see what can happen. Um, if we sell more units, the margin will of course, that's 10% more units, still stay at 40%, the gross profit margin. But although these costs have gone up a little bit, um, I think I've put an extra zero in there, that's better. I meant to do that one. Uh, that's looking a little bit healthier because we sold more units. Get up to 15,000 and not only is the margin still 40% because it's only the units that have changed, but the fixed element of the expenses is spread over more units. So we've got a better net or operating profit margin. If we actually change these numbers, we can see what happens. We'll stick with these numbers so far because they were actually making a profit. Um, if our rent goes up, it doesn't affect the gross profit margin, but it will reduce the operating profit margin. If we get fed up with sticking in traffic jams and buy a bike, our operating profit can go up. But of course, the gross profit margin hasn't changed because it's below the line. So as these change, these change, so just to remind you, if we change these a little bit, the margin goes up and therefore the operating profit will go up, which is a very important defect. And that's why it shows for now.